Hi guys, welcome to another q and I haven't done one for a long, long time and I've had a really terrific response from this. I've got a lot of questions to get through. So we're going to get on with it. The first one is from Andrew Aloshin. He says, hey Mac, and by the way, I haven't read any of these. These are just on the fly. I have no idea what's in them. Cass compiled them all for us and just put them all out on a Word document. So I'm just going through them now. So as I was saying, it's Andrew's question. He says, hi, Mac, what is the longest play session you have had in your life? What was the game? How did you feel after you finished playing mentally and physically? You may have answered this before, but apparently I've missed it. Thanks a lot and all the best. I don't know. <laughs> when we did the UK Quake Championships, that was over a weekend. And I don't think I slept at all, but we did go night clubbing for about five hours in between. Um, and I was probably about 19, so I felt fine afterwards because I was like extremely fit. So that's probably the longest. In recent times, um, I remember one, I played Dragon's Breath on the Amiga for 36 hours. Um, but it does drain you. I fell asleep in City of Heroes and woke up at three in the morning, uh, still on TeamSpeak with the uh, guild that I was in. And I was just flying into a mountain. The mountain had stopped me. I was just like horizontally flying into a mountain. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Little Loogie, have you ever played a game that you got so immersed that you lost track of time and you could not stop until you finished? Trying to find a game like that. I've not been able to get into games like I used to and I'm starting to lose interest in gaming. <sighs> I'm not surprised, to be honest, with all the shite around. Best wishes, wishes, Mac, and thank you for your hard work. Sending love from the colonies. Um, I get immersed in a lot of games. I know, the, I know Half Life. I couldn't put that down. Half Life Two, especially. I just literally couldn't put it down. Some strategy games, I just get totally lost in as well. But I can't specifically think of a game where, um, I think World of Warcraft in vanilla, I. I, I would like start playing at seven at night and then I'd glance at the clock and it'd be two in the morning and I'd be like, what the f***? Where did the time go? So I'd say that was one of the most immersive games I've played because uh, you just got so into your character, you know. I think Morrowind was another one that did that. I became a mass murderer in Morrowind and I had a house with all these bodies piled in and I got totally immersed in that. But I can tell you one that I can really remember specifically being late for work, trying to finish a mission, and that was Battle Isle by Blue Byte Software a long, long time ago. What that answers that question. Hamo Jameson, what do you think of Better Than Wolves mod for Minecraft? I hear from Mesh that it's a mod for men. Have you played it or are you not that into Minecraft? Love your work, Mac, and I look forward to your next wabs. I hope to see a Fallout 3 or Oblivion. Uh, retro wab in the future you will see an oblivion one definitely uh, Bethesda need to pull their fingers out and go back to the roots they do and see why their games were so enjoyable um, better than wolves yes I've played it with mesh um, I think it's a brilliant Minecraft mod uh, uh, yeah I haven't played Minecraft for a while I'm not as into it as he is but it is still a good game if you mod it so yeah better than wolves is one of the better Minecraft mods Hamo Jameson oh, we just had a question by him we have We've got another question. If you go to E3 next year, how are you going to interview these c**ts? Are you going to be a third person with a mic interviewing on camera, or are you going in first person with a camera in their faces? Are you going to use a bell when they incriminate themselves? Um, I'll be taking a camera. Uh, I've got a camera, um, a nice. Uh, it's the one I used when I did video production. It's a JVC HM600 JY, and Cass will be using that. Although it is probably a bit heavy, I might sell it and get a smaller one. But I'll be using that with a. I've got a Rode NTG2 with like sort of an XLR cable, and I'll I'll be holding that, and I'll just be going. In. Alexa just said hi there. I'm sitting here in the dark, and there's a voice behind me just said "fucking hi there." It's Alexa. Alexa. Shut the f*** up. Scared the shit out of us. Alright. And what was I saying? Shit, this is scary. It's like something behind me. He's just got a bit It's just... Hell. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Yes, so... I'll be sticking the mic in their faces. 
And I'm looking behind this now, I'm like, put the light on. Hmm. I'll be uh, sticking the mic in the faces. <laughs> this is creepy shit. And I'll be asking them the questions. I will have a bell, and if I sense bullshit, I will be ringing it. AK Trashy, back into the dinosaur here. I was wondering how you were handling all of the good stress that your current life situation has presented you. There's no such thing as good stress. After listening to your story, it reminded me a lot of my situation and how stress can somehow bizarrely affect you in ways it's hard to prepare for. I would love to hear your perspective. Well, I think stress is bad for you. Uh, all kinds of stress is bad for you, but it's the experiences that you go through that you learn from, like life experience. Um, is good. Handling stress, I do a lot of exercise. Um, I sh shout and uh, smash a bell around. Not my girlfriend, she's called Belle as well, but I don't smash her around. Uh, I smash her. And there's a one over here. Oh, I'm surrounded by bells, so I just smash them around and that's how I deal with it. But yeah, that's how I, that's how I, I hope that's what you what you're on about. Andy Cliff, hi Mac. AAA games now cost as much or more than a Hollywood blockbuster. Do you think the cost of these games will keep going up, level out, or even cause a crash? I don't see the current model as sustainable. Um, I think they'll keep going up because idiots will keep buying them, and um, fanboys will be fanboys. Uh, I've seen just today. I was reading a thread um, of a game that's not going to have a campaign. And all the fanboys are saying, yeah, we don't, want, we, we don't want that. We want to pay more for less game. Yeah, thanks. And as long as people are like that and are stupid f***ing idiots, then yeah, gaming's f***ed and it will crash. It's not sustainable. There is no way it's sustainable. It's f***ed. The gaming industry's f***ed, I'm telling you. Do you ever see the gaming industry returning to the state it was in in the 90s and 2000s? I see it returning to a state that it was in before that. Because like I just said, that's from Luke Hooten, by the way. Um... I do think the gaming industry is going to crash. We have big, huge, giant blue chip companies acquiring, I love that word, acquiring small, talented developers that their companies like buying, like Mojang was taken over by Microsoft. So Mojang are kind of controlled by Microsoft. And one of the things that happened to a lot of these companies is when the big companies are finished with them, you know, like Westwood got acquired by EA and all of these, when they're finished, a lot of them have to sign a declaration to say that they will not create this, 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 and this for the next three or four years. So you, you're generally losing a lot of talent because these big companies are going to go bust. Like you think People think that the likes of EA and all that are untouchable. Activision, one stock market, boom, and that's the end. That's the end. They are built on the stock market, built around shareholders. And that's all going to go tumbling down. And then what's left is going to be what's on steam with the little indies. I've had a break for food. Um, I'm back now for more questions. Ross Ranger, more in the line of a request. Can you tell us how to critique a game? Where and how to look to see how a game is rated? Your reviews for me personally is spot on. And since I review games without scripts, I want to learn how and where to look to know if a game is good, bad or meh. Thanks, Mac. Um, well, a review is only an opinion. That's what people don't get. It's just your opinion. And I think everybody should have an opinion. And so therefore you can say whatever you want about a game or about the people that made the game. That's free speech. You're exercising your right as for your opinion on that game. Um, for me personally, the number one factor in any game that I review is fun. Now that is fun for me. Not you or anybody else. It's it's what I class as fun. I mean, let's take Rainbow Six Siege, for example. I found the game fun, but not fun enough for £50, which is what I spent on it. It's now down to 35 and I looked at it objectively and thought, £35, is this worth a buy at £35? And I had a look at multiplayer, and yeah, I could totally see how fun that was. I watched a stream for these guys who pretty much had unlocked nearly everything. I watched half an hour of that, saw how how good it was, played it, thought, yeah, pretty much the same as the, the co-op kind of thing because you're using the same operators, and then thought, right, is that worth a buy? And I thought, if you love multiplayer, yes, it is. So basically for that one in particular, multiplayer, yes, 
it's worth a buy. Overall, it's a Rainbow Six title. You've got to remember what the game is. It's a Rainbow Six title. Rainbow Six is all about co-op campaigns. It was never about multiplayer. You know, it's always had multiplayer, but it was never about multiplayer. And it sucks as a Rainbow Six game. So overall, as a Rainbow Six game, no. It's not fun enough for the money. Now, the game that I just previewed um, yesterday, that just went live, um, that is it looks looks garbage but it's so much fun i've already sunk 12 hours into it i've only been playing it uh, one day and i've sunk 12 hours into it i absolutely love it i don't know how much it's going to be but you know that is fun it but looks like shite so for me the overwhelming factor for reviews is the fun factor if it isn't fun then i'll give it a thumb down and it has to be fun for me now then you have to kind of look at what makes a game fun for you. What do I like and what do I dislike? I dislike all this rolling around the floor bullshit and fighting bosses and doing the same thing over and over and over again. I, I like way more in my games than that. Um, I love first person. I don't really like third person, but I will still thumb up a game that's third person. I love Wildlands because it had such a big open world with a lot of different types of missions and the missions were fun so i like it i'm probably going to like far cry 5 because i like the the way the far cry worlds are so that's another plus for me it would have to have shiny combat with total x-ray vision dumbed down enemies and and clunkiness for me to not like it so people kind of know what they're going to get i love strategy I love strategy games, but not all strategy games. I do thumb down strategy games if they're not fun enough. And so you kind of, with reviews, you, you you have to kind of have a, a bit of a personality. And people, when they come to watch my reviews, I think a lot of them know that if there's something bad in there, I'm going to find it and, and warn them about it. And I would never use one of my reviews as the be-all and end-all before I bought a game. But if I was a, a consumer, I would watch all my reviews, and I'm not just saying that, and it's simply because a lot of the others, if not all of the others, hardly ever mention the bad things. Because if you mention bad things, you saw what happened with Rainbow Six. The fanboys will come for you. If you know if you do that, if you mention the good things, the fanboys won't come at you. They'll stick up for you. And that's the trouble with the gaming industry. As far as the journalists go, they are yes men because they do not want the wrath of the fanboy and so they pretty much love everything and hardly ever critique it and if they are going to critique it they will critique a minor thing just to make it look like they're giving a balanced review but they're not this gloss over all the big gaping problems i think the the best thing i can say is just be yourself i mean i totally unscript everything i ever do and you know, I just, I'm just, I press record and I'm, I'll be myself. Sometimes I get it wrong, sometimes I don't. But that's, you know, we're all human. Uh, I don't think I deserve anywhere near the vitriol that I get. But, you know, that's the, you know, it goes with the turf. You've got to deal with it. Now, I deal with it by banning them. People don't think I should. People think that, you know, I should just sit here and be to get told that I should go away and die and all that. But it's not them that's getting it every day. Uh, you know, if I want to delete a video, I will. If I want to delete comments, I'll delete the comments. You know, it's my channel. I can do what I want with it. I do what I want to make it as comfortable for me to do my job as possible. And, you know, I am my own man. And if other people have different opinions to that, that's fine. You've just got to be yourself and don't let anybody tell you how to run your channel. Do it your way. And if they don't like it, they can unsubscribe. That's the way I do it. And that's how I deal with it. And I am dealing with it. And, you know, if I have to, I'll disable comments on every single video if I have to. You know, I am I am going to continue. I won't be silenced. And that's what the fanboys want. They want to drive you away. That's what they're trying to do. They set up Reddit groups to come for you. They, they score mental money. It's, it's hilarious, these people. They need help. They need counselling, these people. They are over a f***ing computer game. You know, they actually have mental issues and so you know you're coming into this game if you're going to be honest and you're going to be critical be prepared to get attacked by some of the most mentally retarded people you'll ever meet in your life well you'll not meet them thankfully but keyboard warriors roland narvillas games have evolved over 10 15 years quite a bit i like to remember some old classics such as silent storm diablo 2 etc 
as quite perfect games, but when I ask myself if I would like to play them again today, even in a remastered version, the answer is always no. Well, you speak for yourself there. I find that more modern games, even while lacking some good design, still incorporate a lot of the quality of life features, which make your time spent on a game more focused on the gameplay itself and not time wasting. I'm not talking about the shitty features. Do you honestly think that the raw game design of the old best or good games is really still the best they can ever be? or it has to be some kind of adapted version which takes it from both worlds. I think this, this is the way I look at it. Games have to copy off each other because if they don't do that, they won't evolve. But the problem with it is people literally copy and paste these days. They don't add anything new. So what you get is you get a lot of games that are pretty much the same. I mean, take Horizon Zero Dawn. That game, right, is just copied and pasted from a tried and tested formula on the console over and over and over again and i'm sick of it i'm sick of it dark souls and all of that you know what i'm saying it's just copy paste copy paste copy paste nothing new is added you look back to the olden days in the 90s when you had doom which evolved from wolfenstein you know wolfenstein evolved into doom which evolved into quake which evolved into hex and heretic quake 2 uh rise of the triad Return to Castle Wolfenstein. It all just evolved and then into Half-Life, then into Half-Life 2. And you know, it just, the evolution. You look at how the games progressed, you will see a curve. All right, some of them fell short of it, you know. I mean, even Wolfenstein evolved Commander Keen and things like that. So you need that. I mean, June 2 evolved into Command and Conquer, which evolved into Command and Conquer 2. You know, then Red Alert and all the rest of it. And then you had the Starcrafts in and it all evolves and evolves and they add more and more and more and more. Then Survival came along. Survival should have been an amazing game by now, but the survival genre is stuck in the mud. You know, you need 20 chickens to survive through the f***ing night. You know, it hasn't really evolved anywhere. It's never gone anywhere since that first big survival game, DZ, when it was still an armor mod, you know? It, it hasn't really evolved. RTS has evolved. First person shooters have evolved, but survival games haven't really evolved and the console gaming hasn't evolved at all, considering the new Xbox and the new PlayStation are really powerful machines. Where's all the evolved gaming gone? It's the same old shite. I mean, you look at Call of Duty, tell me that that's not the same copy and pasted game over and over again every single november it's it's garbage the map design is absolutely atrocious i play medal of honor allied assault you want to see the maps in that in multiplayer they're absolutely phenomenal maps it, they have battle lines they they don't have intentional battle lines at the beginning saying you're there you're there but one, one team spawn, spawn at one end of the map, one at the other, but the map is designed in such a way that there are bottlenecks that you have to get past. That, that doesn't happen anymore in games because, oh, we don't want a bottleneck. We don't want a bottleneck because they'll not know what to do with a bottleneck. So what we'll do, we'll make it a great big open circle or a big square, and then we'll have a spawn there, 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 there. So after the initial start, when you're all at one side and the others are at the other, once you start killing each other, you can spawn over there, you can spawn over there, you can spawn there, 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 there. And so what you end up is a cluster of people shooting each other going pew pew hey mama watch pew pew, pew mama pew. that's what you get and tell me that that's not the way it is with pretty much every first person shooter now because it is because the people making them are fucking clueless look at star wars battlefront look at that it's just an absolute fucking mess of pew pew it is it's just garbage they're all fucking garbage. Yeah, I get them all the time and I play them and it's like, oh, here we go. Same old, same old. Just no synergy whatsoever in the map. It's just fucking tripe. And I'm sick of it. I am absolutely sick of it. You know, if you ever played Battlefield Vietnam, you know, that's how you do it. Battlefield 1942, that's how you do it. You know, you don't get that now. There's no time to think now. There's no time to plan or strategize. It's all just shoot, shoot, pew, pew, shoot, shoot, pew, pew, cutscene. That's what it is. Apart from games like Squad. Games like Squad, but they are right at the other end of the spectrum, you know. So, it's I'm I'm getting off topic here. I mean, um, I've done a few retro reviews. Uh, look at Dungeon Keeper. I don't think there's anything as good as that out in that genre, and that was made back in the 90s. So I still think old games are better. They just are. They just are. It's it's a sad indictment of the gaming industry. There's hardly any real good innovation going on now. I mean, yes, Elite Dangerous is better than Elite but it's pretty much the same game.
you know. Mr. Stabby, hey Mac, did you play anything other than the Atari 2600 and PC? Yes, I did Amiga and Commodore 64. Jeff Owens, you've never really commented on cheating in multiplayer games. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter, preferably on a Friday evening after you've had a few. <laughs> well, cheating is simple for me, the, the philosophy on cheating. As someone who played very competitively back in the 90s and the noughties, I despise cheating, but I, can, I just can't for the life of me understand why anybody would want to cheat because I think it comes down to why do you play competitive multiplayer games. I played them for myself. I wanted to get top of that leaderboard for me. I didn't give a f what other people thought. I play to win for myself. And when I get top of the leaderboard, I look at that and I think, yeah, I was the best there. I was better than everybody here. That's why I don't like playing these unlucky first person shooters because when I come top, it's like, yeah, but did I have a better gun than him? Did I, is it because I'd unlocked that and he probably hadn't or all them underneath me had inferior guns? It's like, there's, a, there's kind of like a mm, feeling, you know, it's like, mm, well, but when you play Medal of Honor, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Quake and all these, and you come top, it's like, yeah, we all started with the same shit, but I was the best, baby. And that's a good feeling, especially when you're playing like a big game and there's a lot of people and especially when it's a clan server and you're playing against clans, clan members, you know, that's a really nice achievement. And so there, Johnny Cheetah comes along with his aimbot and wall hacks and he comes top and he's sitting there and he looks at the scoreboard at the end of the game and he sees his name at the top. He knows that he's the worst player on that in that game. You know, what? despite what everybody else thinks, everybody else might think, oh, wow, he's good. But he knows that he isn't. He knows that even the guy who came bottom is a better player than him because he cheated. So I couldn't live with that. I could, I literally could not play a game like that. I just couldn't. I couldn't play a game and become top by not playing the game. You know, I just couldn't do it. So I don't understand them at all. I, I don't get the mentality of them. Uh, I don't know what goes on in their heads. Uh, I just don't understand it at all because by cheating, you are actually admitting you are the worst player in that game. And that's not something to be proud of, to be honest, is it? Billy Batchett, can we see more of Rabbit in your videos? Love that little guy. You will, you can, he is, definitely. Druss, are there any games that based on franchises outside of video games like Star Wars that you like or hate? Also, which do you think is the best and worst overall with uh, the video game licenses? I didn't like the Batman ones. Uh, and I think my favourite has to be Star Wars games, but not the new ones, the old ones, like the old Star Wars Battlefront, Jedi Academy, XV TIE Fighter, all of them ones. I think they've been the best. Uh, I think Lord of the Rings have probably been the worst, apart from the um, RTS one that came out, which I forgot, which you can't get now. Uh, that was a crackingly good game. But the recent uh, Lord of the Rings games have all been diabolical, and this new one that's coming out looks like a typical f***ing roll around the floor boss fighting console trash. Spirit Toaster, Mac, what are your favourite stealth games, or is that not your cup of tea? Do you think gameplay can cover up for a bad story? Yes, um, I'm not. I've never been into massive, massively into stories in games. Hidden and Dangerous One and Two are probably my favourite stealth games, along with some of the Rainbow Six games. None of them had particularly good stories, but the stealth aspect of them games was just brilliant. Young what are your top five indie games you have ever played? Oh, bloody hell. Um, I have no idea. I'd, I'd say Gettysburg. Sydney's Gettysburg, which kind of was indie, I believe, uh, when it came out. Um, Seven Days to Die. I'd say Defense Grid. I'd say um, FTL. I really don't know, to be honest. I really don't know. There's been some terrific indie games. Um, but there's also been some diabolical indie games and there's probably some really big ones that I've totally missed that I'm so forgetting. Uh, so if I think of one, I'll come back to that. Uh, same guy, has Rabbit sorted out his addiction to tea? Uh, yes. No. Not really. Breast Wobbler. Hey Mac, I know this is personal, but how is your health? Have you had problems last year, if I remember correctly. Also, did you adjust to your new place? Uh, Health-wise, I'm all right. My blood pressure's a lot better. Um, all the stuff that was going on before is gone now, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Stress-wise, yeah, there's still a lot of stress around. 
I'm kind of adjusting to life in this new place. It's weird because I lived in the same house with the same people for 21 years and now I'm living in a different house with a different person. So it's kind of weird. It is kind of strange, but I'm getting there. I'm coping and uh, yeah, it just takes time to get used to it all, I guess. But yeah, I'm pretty settled now. Smogsy, you are going to be marooned on a desert island for the rest of your life. Damn. And But you're allowed to take a power supply, a laptop, uh, no internet, and a CD player with three games and three albums. What would you take and why? Bloody hell. I'd take Stranded so I could play with myself, playing with myself. I'd take a U2 Joshua Tree. I'd take 101 Greatest Hits from the 80s. And I'd probably take... Um, a Justin Bieber's greatest hits so that when I feel like killing myself because things is bad I could play that and realize that things could get a hell of a lot f***ing worse as for games I'd take defense grid because you can play that offline and I love it I'd take um I'd probably take medal of honor no that's multiplayer shit man I'd take an RTS I'd take Starcraft 2 and I'd take probably Skyrim because I never did get to finish it and that's a big open world but it's single player so there you go Marcus Amazing Woodward what is the air speed velocity of an unladen swallow hmm. unladen swallow they are fast aren't they in miles an hour or feet a second or meters a second or what I'd probably say and let's just think they go in a second they're like I'd say 10 meters a second. There you go. Marcus Amazing Woodward. Same guy. Have you ever tried wearing a dress? No, I've never tried. Does a skirt count? This is. Mac. No, don't. Just say no, I can move on. No, but that's lying. I got out the shower and. I was drying myself off and Cass, she had hurt her neck and she was sitting on the floor at the bottom of the wardrobe trying to find clothes to put on and she pulled out this stretchy skirt and kind of threw it over her shoulder and it landed on the bed next to us and I thought for a joke I'd put it on, this is bad, I don't. So I put a skirt on and stood there looking like some kind of freak and uh, she turned round and was like, is there something you want to tell me about your past? And I'm like, yeah, I guess good. But yeah, that's the only time uh, for a joke. And I'm probably going to regret saying that. Advent Mortal. What is your favorite platformer? Please, Mac, I must know. I don't like platformers, but uh, I guess I'd have to say Donkey Kong because I played that to death. Uh, Manic Miner, I played that to death as well. Michael Higgins, whatever happened to that one survival game you were kind of working with the developers on, where the player had an underground bunker for crafting and you fought against zombies and a security force in a town? Um, I, I got away from that a long, long time ago, pretty much about two weeks after I did that little video on it because the guy couldn't develop, really. He was just an asset flipper, so I just kind of thought I'm wasting my time here. He, he couldn't implement any of the things that I wanted and the things that he had implemented were not the things that I wanted the way it was done and I found that he was incapable of doing a proper game he was just a, just an asset flipper in my eyes Eric Cox, do you think fanboys for games are crazier than sports fans? oh yeah, oh yeah absolutely I mean fanboys have murdered people but so have sports fans I think the difference is that um, fanboys are deluded whether our sports fans pretty much aren't. If someone comes up to you and says your team sucks in sports, then most sports fans will say, mm, yeah, you're right, we do kind of suck because we're bottom of the league. But you go up to a fanboy and say, uh, I'm not really a fan of your game, I think it's pretty shit. They will, Even if the game is shit, they will never ever accept anything bad about the game. So I think fanboys are the scum of the universe, to be honest with you. Uh, they're ruining the gaming industry. I wish they would just be like, you know what, I love this game, but you're right. This is bad, this is bad, and this is bad. But then they're not a fanboy if they do that, because fanboys are just the, the blind ones, you know. You know, you take the most toxic communities, you know, the Rainbow Six community, for example. You've got people on there who are 
totally normal gamers who will say, yeah, you're right, you know what? It's shit that there's no uh, campaign. It's shit that single players advertise and it's crap. It's shit that co-ops advertise, but it's crap. It's shit that you're paying £50 for this, which isn't really a Rainbow Six game. Yeah, you get them, but they're still like what's left, you know? But then you get the people who just are deluded and they're just like no 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 this was the way it was meant to be even though it wasn't you know it was supposed to have a campaign but the developers pulled it you know all that they, and still charged you 50 pound for it you know oh no no that didn't happen and you know you know you, you can't buy renown when you can and all that they're just fanboys you know so yeah they're worse uh ryan raffo hey mac is there any possibility of mac and mesh collab uh yeah i don't see any reason why not i'm up for it Alex Hamajabajin, have you played Kingdom Come Deliverance? If you have, is it BWAB? Also, if I may ask, what's your favourite video game of all time? Yeah, just waiting for that. Yes, I have. I, I bought uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance about a year ago. Got into Alpha. Looked pretty decent, but then they started f***ing about with the controls for the combat and they decided that they were going to make it for the controller with lock on and everything. And the last time I played, which was about seven months ago, it was a big pile of fucking donkey phlegm. And so I probably will be wabbing it and raping it because it's fucking rife. I don't know why they can't just make a really good combat system based off chivalry, which is the base of a, of a good chivalry combat is the base of a very, very solid uh, sword fighting experience all you need to do is add a bit more directional blocking and things like that but get rid of lock on lock on ruins sword games fact it absolutely ruins them because it becomes ultra unrealistic the second you are locked on to an opponent but they might have got rid of lock on now i don't know same guy could you do a face reveal at some point i've done loads I've done absolutely loads go to mac and mesh uh youtube channel and search for mesh comes back i'm in that loads same guy again the witcher 3 or batman arkham knight <laughs> witcher 3 uh, mika game of the year 2027 or what technologies do you envisage to become the industry industrial breakthrough for gaming over the next decade and what sort of game would you like to see and play as the game of the year in 10 years time i'd probably say it's going to be vr i think vr is going to develop more and more and more you're going to see a lot more and i hope that in uh, 10 years time we have holodeck technology where I can summon 25 naked lesbians all covered in molasses and honey and we can have a good game of um, table tennis. But no, I, I do think it's going to be along the VR side of things. I think it's going to develop more and more and more and become a full body experience. I think, I mean, they have got that now in prototype, but it's pretty shit. But I think that's going to be where it's going to be at. H H H tap. What happened to all the great FPS with stories that were worth playing for the story alone? Um, people got lazy. That's what happened to them, H. It's as simple as that. And a lot of the fanboys who think that it's cool to only like the multiplayer side of games, you know, the, you know, you know, kids, H. You know when you know when you're like fourteen and fifteen, you're a prick, aren't you? Let's be honest. When you're about fourteen and fifteen, when I look back, what a bell end I was. You know, you're, all, you're, you're a bell end. You, you think you're tough and you think you're big and you're clever if you like something that's kind of like a bit, you know. So you'll say to kids, oh, you play single player. Lol, I play multiplayer against other humans. And so they kind of, you know, shit on uh, campaigns and all that. Uh, say, oh, we don't want it. We don't want it. We want to pay more for less. You know, them kind of people. And I think that's why I think big game companies now know they can get away with not doing it. So they stop doing it and they put minimal effort into that because they know that online transactions are for multiplayer and without multiplayer you're not going to get many online transactions so you put in your shop you get in multiplayer you sell people f***ing hats you sell people tartan covers for their sniper rifle and you make a f***ing profit carvalho sounds foreign guys do you think there will ever be a game about italians in world war ii yes i do i think there'll be a game about italians in World War Two, it could be a really good game. Uh, you could have them changing sides all the time. You have to guess which side they're going to be on. Uh, you know, the tanks could all have reverse gears. Or is that the French? I think it's French. Uh, anyway, it goes on to say their tanks were shit and their leaders maniacs, but the common soldiers were brave and fought well with what they had. Yeah, for one or the other side. <laughs> I mean, common there will be at least a story turn right before the end. 
Oh, I think, I mean, come on. There will be at least a story turn right before the end of the Jager. So at least he's got a sense of humor, this guy. But I'm sure the Italians have been in a Battlefield game. Um, I've played them in a strategy game before, definitely. Um, I think it was Decision in the, in the Desert. I'm not sure. Uh, an old Microprose game, that. But, yeah, I, I do. I mean, I know the Italians were brave. And I know they fought well in the war for whichever side they were on. But, you know, they weren't really a mainstream power in World War II. And I think that's why they get overlooked a lot. Even though there was a hell of a lot of action over there. Uh, but, yeah. I don't know. John, hey Mac, any chance of a revisit the squad after the new animation Alpha 10 system drops? Also, have you checked out Onward on the VR? I haven't checked out Onward, but I probably will. And yeah, I'm planning a squad revisit very, very soon. Jean Henstrom, what would you rather have in real life? X-ray vision or third person view? X-ray vision, X-ray vision any day. I won't tell you what I'd do with the X-ray vision, but you know, I'd be straight down the hospital and I would uh, be looking for illnesses in people's bodies. Mm. Kinda. Same guy. Is Rabbit an actual sock puppet or did you just cut a hole in his ass? When he says prison purse. Rabbit's real. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would you think he was a puppet? He's actually real. And he snorts tea. Seriously. Seriously. Charles Waite. In my opinion, he's a puppet. In my opinion, 2016 was the worst year for gaming. Especially the first half. In as long time as I can count on my hand the games I thought for good and worth the money. Uh, and count on my finger the game I still play regularly. So this raises the question, right? What do you think it would take for a gaming industry to improve? For every Prey and Ultimate General Civil War, there are 10 more Galactic Hitmen. There's about 50 more Galactic Hitmen, you mean? P.S. You might think you are the Doverkin of gaming, but we all know you are a sellout. Yeah. I think a crash is the only thing that's going to Im improve the gaming industry and I think a crash is coming there's too many big companies owning too many smaller companies and when these big companies go bust and they will, they're all built on the stock market, they're all built on shareholders and it will go tumbling down people think that they're, they're pretty much invulnerable but nah, it just takes a, a quick switch in the market and they're all going to have the the carpet pulled from under their feet and they're all going to tumble down and all the little companies are going to go tumbling down and then you're going to be left with the indies then it's going to have to be rebuilt and hopefully we'll rebuild it properly so i think that's the only thing that can save us now matt roller what's your favorite vr game oh project cars and elite dangerous i mean yes seriously how do you like your toast um golden with a little bit of black in the middle uh oh, it's got to be about games. I hear Bannerlord is supposed to have co-op thoughts. I bloody hope so. Amazing game. Um, I can't wait for Bannerlords. Mountain Blade is just awesome. In fact, can I come back? There you go. Going back to the guy, my top five indie games. I was looking for one more. There it is. Mountain Blade. Chase Collins. Hey, Mac. Maybe look to Onward VR. Yes, I will. If you haven't already, I've been holding off buying the Oculus controllers, but that game looks like it may be worth picking them up for. Did you know mother pigs tend to eat their young when they are afraid? I didn't. I didn't. Thanks for that. That's really... Um, I would buy a third uh, sensor if you have the Oculus. It makes a, a huge difference and it's amazing. Um, as for Room VR, I'm not a huge fan, to be honest. Nathan Lester. Hello, Mac. Will you be completing your playthrough of Outlast 2? Yes. Roll van der Veen. Hey Mac, as a videographer and gamer myself, I was wondering what kind of video productions you were making a few years back. Did you have your own business? Did you make business promotions or wedding videos? Did you, do you miss it now? I had my own business and um, I only did one wedding video and that was as a stand-in for a, a guy in the Institute of Videography which I was a member who had been dropped in the shit by uh, his second cameraman not turning up and he rang me and asked if I could quickly head over to where uh, I think it was Slaley Hall or somewhere and do a uh, be second cameraman I didn't really enjoy it that much um, but that wasn't the kind of stuff that I did I did um, corporate promotion charity and uh, pilots and documentaries that's what I pretty much did and yeah I missed it and I loved it especially after I got spotted by a, um, a, a, a producer a TV producer who used me for all of his pilots 
uh, did pilots for Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, uh, uh, BBC Arts and all that. That was great fun. Loved it. And if it hadn't been for the fucking recession, I would still be doing it. But that just wiped out all the work and everybody went bust and cried into their cocoa. And finally, the Viking. Do you have a vision or a plan for Worth a Buy as a brand beyond being an independent game reviewer? To elaborate, do you see this being the job you have until you retire? Do you have any plans to review other media such as movies? Do you have a vision for the brand to get into an already established publication or website? Or is it, or is your plan to grow it as an independent entirely? Uh, yeah, independent all the way. I don't wish to be I don't really want to do collabs. I don't really want to get... No, I, I want to be totally independent in everything. I could do this till I retire. Um, I will if I have to. But I would like to branch out and evolve into other things. I am getting a bit disillusioned with gamers. I'm not going to lie to you. The There's some amazing people in the gaming industry. I've got some amazing subscribers. But there's so many awful, horrible people out there that are in the gaming industry and they seem to be worse than pretty much anywhere else unfortunately and so it does kind of you know make you think is it worth it at times i really don't enjoy it as much as i used to i ca have kind of lost a bit of my joy at this and i intend to get it back and i'm doing things with my channel now to ensure that i get it back and it is hard it's, it's very hard people have no idea how hard it is it's just gruelingly hard doing this it's a very very difficult job the amount of shit you have to put up with is just phenomenal um, I am looking to opening a, a totally different YouTube channel that has nothing to do with gaming um, I'm probably going to do that this year that doesn't mean worth a buy is going to suffer uh, I'm going to be doing very minimal things on it but I'm going to do things that I like and I'm going to instead of when we days off be stuck on a computer i'm going to be doing something else uh, on this other channel so i'm looking forward to that i don't know what it's going to be yet i have got a few ideas a sort of um max view of uh, the history of the world and just do history history talks <laughs> to camera you know like a piece to camera kind of thing i've thought about doing things like trying out different hobbies like metal detecting and things and just seeing how that goes there's a lot of things going on. I've thought of movie reviews, but mm, I don't think I'm looking for something that doesn't require a huge amount of effort to get each video up. Because I think that's the problem with the gaming side of things. There's, you know, for every video I've put up, there's probably about, I don't know, anywhere between 10 plus hours gone into just getting it up. Whereas I want to be able to do something in, in two hours so that I can uh, get more of them out there. Because one of the things that annoys me is I can't get that many videos out. And I do like making the videos and it's fun and I like to see people laugh at them and get a smile. So I want to try and do something like that. And I want to do something that I really enjoy that has a really good sort of um, viewing base. So I don't know what that's going to be, but rest assured you will when it goes up. So yeah, I hope that answers your question and everybody else's question. And uh, that's it. That's all of them done. If I've missed any questions out, I do apologise. And uh, if you post a question uh, in Patreon, I will answer it in the comments of the video. That's if I don't delete them. Uh, but <laughs> no, I'm not going to delete them. I'll just anybody who comes in with all the Rainbow Six bullshit just gets banned. So it's as simple as that. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you later with more streams, more videos, and uh, more laughs, hopefully.